So in your packet, uh, you have a section that says the morning application activity. So go to that page. Uh, it follows the slides and things that we just went through. Move it up again? Okay. Okay. Try this way. Okay. Now I'm just going to have to keep my I'm going to have to keep my head like this. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so if uh, you look at the morning application activity, what it tells you to do there in the directions, um, first it says to review the evaluation scenario. Now you already read it, you chose one as your group, so you have your scenario picked out. Um, and for each of the fundamentals below, First, take a few minutes individually. If you're like me, I like to kind of think through this stuff on my own before I talk to other people about it. Some people like to just go ahead and start talking about it, but I need a little bit of time to think through it myself. So let's, let's give the introverts in the group some time to think through it individually. Um, and then discuss your thoughts as a group to come up with a group response. And be prepared to share your insights with the larger group. So we'll take, we have, we have a good deal of time dedicated to this. So let's start with maybe 15 minutes and we'll keep adding, or let's say 20 minutes. Start thinking about 20 minute intervals and then we'll check in and see where you all are. Um, and at some point we'll come back as a group and we'll report out some things that you all thought about, insights that you gained, uh, some common ideas. Okay, let's come back together and let's, let's start sharing some of the things that you all talked about in your groups. So, let's talk about this first section, um, which was quality. And for this one, you all had to talk about program evaluation standards, the ones that would be most relevant given what you could uh, ascertain from this scenario, and also ones that would be more difficult to address. So we have a really large group, and we need to finish this so that we can have lunch. So we'll just take a few kind of group volunteers or any insights you had when you talked about this, um, things that you thought about, and realizing every, you know, not everybody's working from the same scenario. So uh, maybe the question is, um, you're going to need to give us a little bit of background on the scenario that you were using, though I think everybody pretty much read all of the scenarios in the beginning. So tell us which scenario you were working from, and then the standards that are most relevant, um, ones that would be difficult to address, any kind of insights you had as you walked through that process. So any volunteers um, who'd like to share? And do we have a microphone for? Okay, so we chose the scenario with the school district. Um, and so, the first question, sorry, hold on just a second, I'm like flipping back and forth. Be most relevant, uh, given what we know about the uh, scenario. You're, when you're dealing with
good that you all include youth in your, in your practice. Eddie Holcomb, who I mentioned earlier, um, has a book that's called Students Are Stakeholders Too, and it kind of talks about that process of including students in, in our evaluation and data work. Absolutely. Volunteer who wants to talk about the quality questions? Well, I know everybody got through that part. So, uh, Sophia? We discussed the, the same thing that the previous group. Um, and we also, so we, we definitely thought it was important to include the children um, and their parents. Um, we also recognize that because we're talking about 53 different um, culturally diverse groups that um, there will be language barriers and that we would probably need to involve perhaps um, church groups or social service agencies or who, if anyone that is able to sort of, that, that might be helping those families with their transition, um, that might be able to serve as translators or, you know, that sort of thing to help the communication because we recognize that the communication would be difficult in this particular situation. And then we also thought, um, so that was sort of um, you two and you four um, and then we also thought U7 was important because we uh, recognize that this is a very controversial political issue and there are probably people in that community um, that whose, whose families have been there maybe for generations or, or you know, longer perhaps in these newer communities that are migrating in and that, that may be um, unreceptive to those communities and so we wanted to make sure that they had a seat at the table so that they would hopefully come to buy in to the program and realize that the whole community would benefit from their involvement so we wanted to make sure that they had a voice um, as well um, so that's thank you thank you and you've start we started talking about stakeholders a little bit that kind of second part so does anybody have anything they want to share about uh, the questions that go along with the stakeholders piece? Um, or any kind of questions you had or kind of difficulties and challenges in figuring out how you might go about that? Any, anybody have anything they want to share about those questions? Your responses or your process? So we 
talk, we had the case scenario about the, um, the medications in the falls. And so one of the unique stakeholders groups we decided that we also needed to engage was our emergency services groups because they are the ones who get the outcome calls yeah. from the falls. And um, we've really found them to be receptive um, to working in partnership like this. And then also helping them to get to that data so they can um, address who are those ones who are calling because they're falling and maybe we need to do some different interventions. So that was one of the unique things that we looked at in that case scenario. That's good. And it sounds like you have some experience with that group from other work? Yes. Yeah. Um, I saw another hand back here, okay. Uh, Jay Smith, Springfield Urban League. Um, we um, chose secondary to be counselors. The reason for, the, for that, um, in a lot of situations when you deal with this right here, um, you have a lot of organizations that lack diversity. And when you, have the, when you have lack of diversity, you have lack of relatability. If you can't relate to the people that you service, you will never get the successful outcomes. So it's important that the pro that counselors um, are secondary because as an organization, when you empower your staff with the tools needed to reach out to the community and actually have a, a service that's reliable, relatable, and can create change, the outcomes speak for themselves and you realize half the work is done. So it's, it's real important that organizations empower their staff, making sure that they sometimes step outside the box and give somebody an opportunity that may have not necessarily got that for employment because maybe that staff member can be that person needed to be that bridge connection to that population that's having this barrier. That's great. Thank you. Um, let's go to the last one, the understanding questions. When y'all looked at uh, potential program activities and outcomes that you could include in a program theory model, and or the idea of context and what are some things you'd want to dig deeper and know more about context so any any thoughts on those from your groups thank you my name is andy klein i'm with the illinois department of innovation and technology and we're, we're we're applying that program theory model that you you mentioned and we use the um the school setting and the, the things there, there they were looking at specifically was the supporting the services that they brought in all these counselors to talk about. So we addressed that and, and how they could, they weren't very well uh, advertised, if you will, so how they could advertise them, but also more importantly, make them effective. So some things we looked at, we, in using the program theory model, uh, first the activities, uh, assess the needs of the various demographics, because you have a lot of different types of cultures within this one school district that has to be looked at. Uh, next, include the responses and insights from the selected sound samples that you would do to draw your data from and metrics from of the district population. Also determine the appropriate services that could readily address the needs that were identified from these evaluations and assessments. And also, staying within the activities uh, swim lane, if you will, uh, identify uh, local community, and you mentioned participants, uh, participants both informal informal uh, officials and so forth, leaders, who you get would buy in, because if they would buy in, and you can get this buy in from um, local leaders who may, may never he have even been identified, but have a lot to offer, as well as your officials, you're gonna, be, you're gonna see them as advocates, and you'll get a larger buy in from the community as well. That would take care of the activities. Looking at the outputs, what, what are you looking for from this, from all this, this, this work and the metrics? Uh, first of all, uh, include, uh, categorize all the types and needs that you identify. That's one of the that's one of the outputs. Those metrics will help you identify what needs to be done now. Secondly, uh, your budget. Your budget has to support this, and develop a budget that can be used from the various sources to support the needs that that you've identified from metrics. Determine which new services and programs would help what particular demographic sections of the school district. To, to improve. Finally, from the outcomes, the, 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 the outcome swim lane, some uh, results. What are the graduation rates? How many are going, and, and this needs to be tracked to see are we getting a net value for benefit from the work we've done, but also from the financing we re, we've received. 
How many are going to college? How many are going to vocational schools? How many are going into the military? as, as great, great opportunities for careers. How many are becoming entrepreneurs? They don't need the college, they don't need a vocational school, but they have, a, they have an idea or they have a technology or they have a skill that they can get out and market to others. And if that can be drawn from this, from this study at the school district, that would be a plus as a metric for the school district. Next, look at, uh, it, it's very important to look at what kind of leadership are we are developing in the school district and what kind of learning skills are we advancing. Are, we're not just going to school, but are we te teaching them to learn beyond the school setting in their life skills and their career skills. Also look at, it's very important, nutritional and health support because if you're gonna help a, have a healthy mind, you have to help have a healthy fitness system and a healthy body. And so the, the, to the extent that the school district can support nutrition and health, that would be very important and systems to, to uh, in, encourage that. Uh, day in, daycare and aftercare, this supports possibly tutoring opportunities that are missed after the school setting is over with that would help the parents at work, but also additional opportunities of learning for students. Uh, and also, once all this is done, all the metrics are, correct, are collected, and we have these programs, what kind of recognition are we giving? We're accomplishing all this, but are we recognizing that? Community recognition of, from the district of first the students and their accomplishments. Where are they going? What are they accomplishing? What are they doing? And this has to be tracked of the parents or the guardians. Because they're a big part of supporting these students. If they can support the students, the students are gonna be better. And the students will know they have that backing. And finally, let's not forget the school administrators. Because they are a big part of, of drawing all this together and continuing this, this study and the metrics that are needed for the future to make sure the success continues. Finally, lessons learned as you talked about. After all this is done, if we, ha if we have some mistakes that need to be tweaked over time, what are we learning and how are we enhancing it? That's what we had. Um, that's great. Let's do, we're, we're running into lunchtime, but I want to get one uh, group to share the context piece, something that y'all talked about with that last question about context. I don't want to leave that one out. So we have a group who wants to talk about the context piece. You guys? We just, we again did the one about the counseling in schools and um, as far as political context, you know, uh, there could be um, in, in sort of cultural contrast context, there could be um, members of those communities that are experience that have experienced trauma. There could be fear of authority, if, especially if their immigration status is in question. Um, we already talked about the language barrier, but just the like lack of cultural understanding as far as um, you know, just coming from a completely different background. There there may be um, cultural misunderstandings and communication in addition to the language barrier. Um, so those, those are things in the context that we thought should be taken into account. Yeah, I think <coughs> probably with all three of the scenarios, there's a lot of layers to context that you'd wanna dive into um, in terms of the evaluation, I would think. Um, okay, I think we're at lunch. Um, I do want to thank you all for engaging in the activity.